All right, strap in everyone, because today we are going deep, deep into propeller mechanics. Ooh, sounds intense. It is. We're taking on, well, a bit of a monster, actually, a whole aircraft mechanic exam. Oh, wow. Over a hundred questions, and they're all about propellers, those spinning blades that, well, you know, keep planes up in the air. It's amazing, really. You think propeller, you think simple. But there's so much going on, physics and engineering. Right. I mean, yeah, they spin, but how do they make a plane move forward? That's what I want to know. Good question. And luckily, question 89 in this exam it gives us a clue. It talks about horsepower turning into thrust, kind of like how a wing makes lift. Perfect place to start. It all comes down to airfoils. Mm. See, a propeller blade, it's shaped like a wing, curved on top, flatter underneath. Oh! So just like a wing, when it spins, that shape, it creates a pressure difference. Lower pressure on top, higher underneath. So it's basically pulling the plane forward. Exactly. Pulling it forward. Mm -hmm. And just like with a wing, the angle of that blade, it's super important. Ah, so that's what blade angle is. Yep. Blade angle, it controls how much bite the propeller gets on the air. More bite, more thrust, you know. Okay, makes sense. But wait, don't some propellers change their angle? Like while the plane's flying? You're right, they do. But let's start simple. Fixed pitch propellers. The angle is set when they're made, can't be changed in the air. Oh, interesting. And here's another thing. The angle isn't the same all along the blade. Smallest at the tip increases towards the hub. Why is that? Well, it spreads the thrust out more evenly. Makes it more efficient, really. But fixed pitch, they're great for some things. But what if you need more control, like different power for takeoff versus cruising? Ah, so that's where those constant speed propellers come in, the ones that can adjust. Exactly. Think of it like an automatic transmission, but for your plane's propeller. Question 50 in our exam, it talks about this. Keeping the engine at just the right RPM, no matter what you're doing in the air. Okay, I get the idea. But how does it work? What's going on inside that propeller hub to make that happen? It's actually pretty clever. Fly weights, governor, oil pressure, all working together. Okay, break it down for me. All right. Imagine tiny weights inside the hub. We call them flyweights. Now, the propeller spins faster, centrifugal force kicks in. Like those spinny rides that stick you to the wall? Exactly. And get this, as those weights move out, they actually increase the blade angle. Wait, shouldn't it be the opposite? Faster spin, smaller angle, right? You'd think so, right? <laughs> but here's the thing. There's a natural force acting on the blade, trying to push it to a lower pitch. Centrifugal twisting moment, it's called. Huh. So the flyweights, they're like fighting that force. Exactly. They're like counterweights. Yeah. Now, the referee in all this is the governor. It's the brains of the operation. Uses oil pressure and a spring called the speeder spring to keep everything balanced. And the pilot can control that spring, right? Yep. With the propeller control in the cockpit. Changes the tension on the spring. More tension. Flyweights move more freely. Higher blade angle. Higher yeah. RPM. Wow. This is way more complicated than I thought. So much going on inside that little hub. There is. And we haven't even gotten to feathering or reversing yet. Oh, yeah. What are those all about? They're all about safety and control. Imagine one engine fails on a twin engine plane. You don't want that dead propeller just windmilling, creating drag. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. So feathering, it rotates the blades so they're in line with the airflow, basically minimizes the drag. Yeah. Super important safety feature. Makes sense. Streamlining it so it doesn't slow the plane down. Mm -hmm. Lever. And some propellers can even reverse their pitch create backwards thrust. Wait, the plane can go backwards? Yep. Useful for big planes or tight spaces on the ground. It's amazing how much tech is packed into those blades, really. My mind is blown. And we haven't even touched on maintenance yet. How do they keep all this stuff working? Ah, uh, that's a whole other deep dive. Balancing propellers, checking for cracks, all kinds of fascinating stuff. Well, I need a minute to process all this flyweight and governor action, but I'm definitely ready to dive into maintenance next time. This is incredible. It is fascinating, isn't it? And trust me, there's a lot more to come. Can't wait. All right, everyone, we're going to take a quick break, but be sure to come back for part two of our propeller deep dive. We'll uncover all the secrets of keeping those blades spinning smoothly. See you soon. <laughs> Okay, I am back, and my head is still spinning, honestly. Flyweights, governors, it's a lot. It is a lot to take in, and we're just getting started, but ready to tackle propeller maintenance now. I think so, yeah. Where do we even begin with that? It seems like there'd be so much to keep track of. Well, the material matters, for one thing. Different materials, different problems. Like wood versus aluminum propellers, those are pretty different. Oh, yeah, right. That's where those questions about solder came in. Exactly. Questions 2, 4, 14, 
a bunch more. They all talk about this. Wood propellers, they can absorb moisture, you see. So they can rot. Yeah. Like a piece of wood just sitting out in the rain. Pretty much. Yeah. Mechanics got checking for cracks, delamination, even insect damage. Bugs. You're kidding. Nope. Wood boring insects, they love propellers, apparently. That's why those holes in the metal tipping on wood props, those are important. I always wondered what those were for. Vents. Question 55 explains it. Let's moisture out. Stops the wood from rotting from the inside. Huh. Tiny holes. Big difference. Who knew? Right. Now, aluminum, you don't worry about rot. But corrosion, that's a big one. Mix scratches, too. Remember those questions about repairing mix? Yeah, 14 and 15. Even a little nick can weaken the whole blade, right? Exactly. Stress concentration, they call it. Okay. Like, if you had a tiny crack in a bridge, it could eventually cause the whole thing to collapse. So it's not just cosmetic. It's about the strength of the whole propeller. Precisely. Now, another thing, balancing, super important. Imagine your washing machine, but it's all off balance. Oh, I know that sound. Makes the whole house shake. Right. Unbalanced propeller, same thing, but worse. Vibration, rough running engine, all that. Question eight goes into this. And you mentioned using solder to balance them. That seems kind of strange. It is, but it works for wood props anyway. Question 26 says they add tiny bits of solder to the metal tipping. To even out the weight. Exactly. Like fine tuning it. Metal propellers, different techniques, but same goal. Got to make sure all the blades weigh the same, both up and down and side to side. Okay, so materials, balancing. What else do they need to check on these things? Blade tracking, that's another one. Question <laughs> 95 talks about that. Making sure all the blade tips follow the same path. Like they're all dancing in sync. Right. And lubrication, those pitch changing mechanisms, they need oil. Same oil that controls the blade angle, actually. Question 11 mentions this. So it's multitasking oil. Yep, but got to do it right. Question 83 warns about messing up those seals on the blades if you're not careful. So many little things to keep track of. It's all about the details. And speaking of details, those hidden cracks we talked about. Yeah. They use special techniques to find those. X-ray vision for propellers. Pretty much. Dye penetrant, magnetic particle inspection. Questions 38, 63, a few others talk about it. Helps find those invisible cracks. Especially after something like a bird strike, I bet. Exactly. Got to make sure there's no hidden damage. And one more thing, especially if you're flying in cold places. De-icing. Ah, oh, right. The de-icing boots and alcohol stuff. Yep, that's it. Questions 10 and 25. Keeps ice from building up on the blades. You don't want chunks of ice flying off a spinning propeller. No, that does not sound good. It's dangerous. So de-icing, that's crucial. As you can see, there's a lot to propeller maintenance. Got to understand the mechanics, the materials, all of it. It's a lot more than I ever imagined. Makes that aircraft mechanic exam seem even more daunting now. It's a tough one, for sure. Hmm. But we're not done yet. We've covered the basics, the maintenance. Now we got to talk about those advanced propeller systems. Oh, yeah, those advanced systems. Like what? Well, start with synchronization. Imagine you've got a twin-engine plane. You wouldn't want those propellers spinning to different speeds, would you? That'd be noisy, for sure. Noisy and shaky. So they use synchronization systems. Question 49 explains it. Controls the RPM. Keeps things smooth and quiet. Like an orchestra, but for engines. Exactly. And then there's something called synchrophasing, even more advanced. Synchro what now? Synchrophasing. It's all about the timing of the rotations. Fine tunes it even more to minimize noise and vibration. Question 78 goes into detail. That's wild. Like a conductor for the engine orchestra? Pretty much. And finally, turboprop installations. Those are like the next level of propeller and engine integration. Turboprops. Those are the powerful ones, right? They are. Question 104 talks about how they manage everything together. RPM, fuel flow, blade angle, all from a single lever. Wow, so it's all connected, like a supercomputer for the propeller. Yes, yeah, efficient, powerful, precise control. Pretty amazing stuff. Seriously impressive. From simple fixed pitch to all this high-tech integration, it's amazing how far propellers have come. It is. But I think my brain needs a break from all these systems. How about we revisit some of those crazy facts we learned? Yeah, good idea. Remind me again why those tiny holes in wood propellers are so important. Moisture. Gotta let that moisture out, or the wood rots from the inside out. Who knew those tiny holes were so crucial? And don't forget the solder. Balancing wood propellers with solder? That's just wild. It is, isn't it? <laughs> like a jeweler, but for giant spinning blades. And synchrophasing, that's another one that blew my mind. Silencing those engines without losing power. It's incredible. So much ingenuity makes you appreciate all the thought that goes into these things. Definitely. It's easy to forget how complex they are, just seeing them spin. But there's a whole world of physics and engineering hidden inside those blades. A world we've just begun to explore.
Exactly. And there's one more aspect we haven't talked about. The forces that act on those blades during operation. Oh, right. We touched on that briefly. What are those forces again? Thrust bending, torque bending, and centrifugal twisting. They all play a role in how the propeller behaves in flight. Okay, break it down for me. What does thrust bending do? Well, question nine explains it pretty clearly. It's the force that tries to bend the blades forward as the plane moves, basically the pressure of the air pushing on the back of the blades. So like the wind trying to fold them over. Exactly. But there's another force working against that, torque bending force, caused by the engine's torque. Torque, that's the twisting force that makes a car go, right? Right. Okay. And in a propeller, it tries to bend the blades in the opposite direction of the spin. Question 37 describes how this makes the tips lag behind a bit. So it's like a twisting force then. It is. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, there's centrifugal twisting force too. That one comes from the spinning itself and it tries to flatten the blades out, reduce the angle. Right, right. Like a jump rope, the faster you spin it, the flatter it gets. Perfect analogy. Question 56 explains this force in detail. So you've got these three forces all pulling and pushing on those blades. It's like a constant tug of war up there. It is. And that's why propeller design is so important. Got to make sure those blades can handle all those forces without breaking. And why those nicks and scratches are so bad, they create weak points, right? Exactly. Any little imperfection can make the blade more likely to fail under stress. That's why those inspections are so important. Got to catch those problems early. Wow. It's amazing how much goes into these things. I never would have guessed. It's a whole lot more than meets the eye. But it's what makes propellers so fascinating. Well, I think my brain is officially full of propeller knowledge for one day. This deep dive has been incredible. It has been a journey. But before we wrap up completely, I want to leave you with one final thought. Considering all these forces, all this complexity, what do you think the future holds for propeller design? Hmm, that's a good question. Maybe even lighter materials, more efficient shapes, who knows? Maybe even self-healing propellers. The possibilities are endless. It's exciting to think about. And to our listeners, thanks for joining us on this propeller adventure. We hope you learned something new and maybe even sparked your own curiosity about these amazing machines. Keep those propellers spinning, everyone. Welcome back to our propeller deep dive. We've talked about how they work, how to maintain them, but last time, we kind of left off on a cliffhanger. We did, didn't we? Those forces acting on the blades, it's a whole other level of complexity. It is, like, they're spinning, creating thrust, but at the same time, there are these forces trying to bend them, twist them, all sorts of things. Exactly. And those forces, engineers have to account for that when they design a propeller. It's a balancing act, for sure. We were talking about three main ones, right? Thrust bending, torque bending, and centrifugal twisting. Right. Thrust bending, that's the one where it's like the wind's trying to fold the blades forward as they spin. Yeah. Good way to think about it. Yeah. Air pushing on the back of the blade. Now, centrifugal twisting, that's a little different. Think of a jump rope, the faster you spin it. The flatter it gets. Yeah. Exactly. Same thing with a propeller. The spinning itself creates a force that tries to decrease the blade angle pull it into a lower pitch. Ah, uh, so that's what those flyweights are farting against? Yep, they're counteracting that force, trying to keep the blade angle where it needs to be. And then you've got torque bending force. That was caused by the engine, the twisting force. Torque, that's what makes a car accelerate. Right, and in a propeller, it tries to bend the blades in the opposite direction of the spin. It's like the engine's trying to twist them one way, the airflow is pushing them another. And then the spinning itself is trying to flatten them out on top of that. It's a lot for those blades to handle. It is. And here's the thing. Those forces, they change constantly. As the plane speeds up, slows down, climbs, descends, all that affects the forces on the propeller. So how do they design propellers that can handle all that? It's all about the materials, the construction, mm. and the math. Lots of math. Engineers have to calculate those forces very precisely. Like, if a propeller needs to be really strong against torque bending... They'd use a tougher material. Right, or make the blades thicker. It's all about balancing strength and weight, too. Mm -hmm. You don't want the propeller to be too heavy. Makes sense. And it makes those questions about nicks and scratches seem even more important now. They are. Any little imperfection can create a weak spot. Like, if you had a tiny crack in a bridge, it could eventually cause the whole thing to collapse. So a nick in a propeller, that could be really bad. It could. That's why those inspections are so crucial finding those tiny cracks, fixing them before they become big problems. This has been an incredible deep dive. I feel like I've learned so much. Me too. It's amazing how something that seems so simple, the, the spinning blades, can be so complex when you really look at it. It is. 
Well, I think we've covered just about everything there is to know about propellers, from the basics to those mind-boggling forces. We have. And to our listeners, thanks for joining us on this journey. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something new, maybe even got inspired to learn even more. There's always more to discover, right? Keep those minds curious, everyone. And until next time, keep those propellers spinning.